If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. In the question, we are given the position function. And then the question also gives us the transverse velocity. And of course, we know that there's a nice connection between the position function and a velocity function. So basically, the fact that they're giving us the velocity in the question is a clue that we actually need to take our position function and calculate its derivative. Admittedly, the question doesn't directly say to calculate the derivative, but again, if it gives you a position function and then the value of a velocity, that's sort of a clue or an indication that you have to change your position function into a velocity function. So we'll take the derivative, and y of xt would become u of xt. Now, of course, the derivative of the sine function is the cosine function, but according to the chain rule, we must also multiply by the derivative of the inside of our cosine function. Now we're taking the derivative with respect to time. So that means that the derivative of kx will be zero and the derivative of phi will also be zero. But the derivative of negative omega t will turn out to be just negative omega. So we can take that negative omega and perhaps move it into the front of this equation. So here is the final form of the velocity function. What we'll do is take the position function and sort of stack it on top of our velocity function. And then we'll perform a neat little algebraic trick whereby we divide the two equations. Notice that when we divide the two equations, the y sub m will cancel, and then sine divided by cosine, of course, becomes tangent. Also notice that when we divide the equations, we're going to have a factor of negative omega in the denominator. At this point, we can plug in all the known values. We'll make a list of them off on the side. So the question notes at time zero, the x position is zero and the y position is also given. Notice that the y position was given in millimeters, so just make sure to convert that into meters. The transverse velocity was given in a standard unit, as was the angular frequency given. So we can take all of these known values and simply plug them into our equation. Now our goal is to solve for the phase constant phi. So maybe what we can do is cancel the negative that appears on both sides. The 0 minus 0 of course can be removed. We can cross multiply. We'll then divide both sides by 0.75. And then finally take the inverse tangent of both sides. And when we plug that into our calculators, we should get a value of approximately 1.2 radians. And that is indeed the correct answer for the phase constant phi. Make sure, by the way, that when you plug that into your calculator, your calculator is in radian mode, not degree mode. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You're welcome to send your own question into the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.